So here's a cast, just for, the idea was here just to get the cast out of the way, the billing out of the way as quickly as possible. And uh, get, up, get on with the story. <clears throat> While we were filming, we um, would do as many landscape shots as possible, just in case they would be useful. And this is actually, we like this because it's anamorphic, within anamorphic, within it. And, uh, it's a striking shot. So here's our boy. And I uh, just want to gen gently introduce him to the audience, really. So give, um, give you an idea of the kind of environment we're in. Freddie was funny on this because this, we have to remember that Freddie and uh, Lara, the boy and the girl in the film, had never acted before. But when he was following us, we were on a quad bike with a steady cam with gyros on it. He kept trying to catch us up. Almost got us a couple of times. That's his first shot ever in his life. An extraordinary design team did an incredible job with that house. It didn't have much of a roof on it when we found it. And they put it all back together and it's lurking in the landscape is the idea and looking back at us. I think. So now we're just going to quietly introduce the family to the audience so you can get to know them. Everything, all the movement, the camera movement, we try to keep as economical as possible. So that we didn't draw attention to ourselves, we draw attention to the uh, characters. Nicely composed frame. Jesus. First word is Jesus. <laughs> Need to fix it. Don't make a mess. two classes in the family. There's a, um, a middle class, which is, we have with Lara, girl there, and Tilda, and more working class, which is with Ray, and with Freddie, which echoes my kind of upbringing, which was uh, mixed. And I like the sound of that, and it also helps us with the, with the subject matter, in that it crosses all borders, you know, it doesn't have a... It's not class specific. This is like a. I like this shot. It's an old um, kind of photograph of a miner or something getting washed down. Very corny, but I love it. It was the price things. That's what I paid for it. Took the, uh, there's no television in the house, there's no music playing in the house ever. So you either talk or you don't. It's a nice like. And there's Dad on in his spot where he. You'll see him out right there. Leave it, darling, I'll do that. Yeah, that's how he works. 400 quid, Vince. In the book, they're 1200 quid. We can all get a living out of this. Mum? We'll see the piece. We'll give us 400 quid. 
Tilda was in fact, she was, when I gave her the script, she was very, very heavily pregnant with twins. And she just had them by the time that we started filming, so her body was in extraordinarily you know, perfect shape for, for filming. Real stroke of luck. Also that she's, uh, she's very brave to do this film when she just had babies. Emotionally it was, you know, could, could be soul destroying. Sit down and shut the roof. Are you having fun? Yeah. It's freezing. Oh! I'm gonna stop. Do you want me to stop? You don't want me to stop. Let's keep going. There's a quietness about it. Michael Carlin, who was the, the, the production designer, and, and I, we, we spent a lot of time looking at police videos of car accidents and crash tests and stuff. And uh, the idea being that, that actually they, they can be very mundane. It's just what's happening within the car, which is extraordinary and terrifying. So. Tilda's actually hung upside down. She's strapped in harnessed upside down in the car here. We worked out a rig which, um, where we could spin her and sit her on top of the car when, between takes. I have a very strong aversion to blue light for night. I've never noticed, I've never, it's never, when I've been out at night, it's never, um, I've never seen blue. So I made sure that they didn't light it in that way, and they and we could we would go as dark as was possible, with it so that the audience didn't um, didn't see and then did see. But we, I didn't want it to be too dark for the audience. Here. This whole sequence we did over uh, two nights. It was very very tough on the actors. It was, it was freezing cold. Very wet. It's a tough one for Ray as well, but Tilda was hanging upside down for a lot, a lot of the time. I particularly like the lighting in this. They um, graded and lit all the the, the fluorescent strips. I did lots of tests on them to make them just right, and I love the atmosphere in that corridor and the stillness of it. Come. <clears throat> I like the makeup in this very much. Ivana did an extraordinary job with this because there's an absurdity in the reality of bandages and scratches, and, but they've all made it, which is good. So something for a vulva. So now we get just a moment where the family's separated and can see their relationship a little. <laughs> How are you doing? I feel terrible. Do you want a cuddle? Yeah. Some lovely music from Simon. This shot I really, I really do love very much. This landscape. It's we kind of leapt up and down with glee and shouted Kurosawa a lot. But this is uh, improvised by these guys and Ray, at one point you'll see the separation happen, which was organized by Ray while he was out there. We were a long way away on the long lens. And she goes, he organized that and we went with her <coughs> and 
we just got very, very lucky in the way the frame, the frame held and they turned and moved at just the right time before we would lose her. And it says a lot about the family, as you see. Very special, I always like this. And again, the music is incredible. Very gentle, very subtle. She's all right, I guess. A bit tired and that. Beautiful. And she's talking to someone, which I know who it is, Sweet. but the audience don't know, Thanks which so. is kind of reflects life, which I like. That's the fun, Jess. And the there are little clues spotted all over the film us. as to their relationship. Sweet, and, uh, honestly, that one, it's like that time was a couple just there. I mean, like Sammy was when he was little. I don't know, Mum says so, but it looks more like her. She handles um, the acting of this extraordinary. Yeah, no, I can't wait. Very no. the, the kind of the, the word on the set was or the phrase on the set was Jack. no acting required. If I see you acting, we cut. Yeah. And um, she was she took to it so so easily. And Peril, Peril did. This was a this is a nice scene where it's been a while. you see them relating, oh, but also he he's a dad Scared looking after his kids. And Your feet off the table. <laughs> At the same time, I feel very happy. This is a joke that Ray has. No, is it? <laughs> was it like that with us? Or and then it, he uh, tells a story which was uh, happened to him when he was a kid, actually, to Ray. So. I mean, it's a sweet man. scene. Got one in. Again, it's shot economically and but, and, but composed. He was forceps. Very well. He's got a long head, yeah. face like a well slapped ass. I know he was trouble from the start. <laughs> so more difficult having us if one of you wanted to leave. What, me or your mother? Either. You want a straight answer? Yeah. The whole house has a... Uh, the, the backstory we, we gave for the house was that... Oh, that, wild. um... <laughs> I was a little boy. An old, an old couple had brought up their children in the house. The children had moved away. The father of the of the two had died. The, 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 I mean, the, the male of the two had died, and she lasted for a little while, and then she'd moved out, and they'd moved in, but hadn't changed anything yet. And so that's the kind of that's the character and the atmosphere of the house. All the textures have come over years and years. I was watching this all in slow motion. You know how things happen in slow Again, Michael time. did an incredible job because uh, it was a, I mean, a pine paradise when we the moved floor, in there. She is the floor, the car hits the floor. Right? Everything you see is right we put in top of her. Right? The geezer who's driving the car, Again, the phone the interrupts. Car, screaming his head off. Right? But he no, wants wait, to finish his story. I love his body language in this. So he goes around and lifts the car off the woman. Oh, his strength. It's amazing, isn't it? Hello. Hello, Vince. No, I'm just making the kids some tea. Pheasant. Yeah, I've got a nice piece of pheasant pie. So you can lie in the country. Boy on toilet with copy of women's magazine. There's a nice steady cam shot here from uh, Al. Very, very tricky. Very windy last that day and very wet. The driver there is one of our guys, he's one of our drivers. <laughs> There's shots for mum. There's something when when parents look at their babies that you can't reproduce and she does an extraordinary job of doing that because she's just had her babies so Tilda really knew how to look. Incredible. And we lose the dialogue and it's not not important at all. Very nice. This is um a, and actually this shot 
was inspired by Jane Horrocks, who's an English actress that I love. She was in a film called Little Voice, which you may know. I saw her once walking across a bridge with two plastic bags, and it stuck with me. <laughs> Tom. And this is that girl that you fall in love with when you're a boy, but you can't speak. And it's the hormones in the air because he's at that point. Freddie is he's a 16 year old boy. So that's that's his age, and uh, it's the inability, inability to articulate your feelings, which is what a lot of the film is about as well. So, and here we see. The two different kinds of bodies that are in the house. Oh, does she look like you? <laughs> and he knows that everyone knows that uh, he fancies her, but uh, it's just in the air. There's a great thing with, with Tilda was that she um, she and I were very, very insistent on getting as much of the detritus, as much of, of the kind of the bits and pieces that go with a newborn in, you know, into the house and into the like the zip up bra here and the and the nipple shields to stop the, to catch the milk and the um, everything that we could uh, would just be around that women would recognise. Um, that mothers would recognise. I should say. Someone's got a filthy mind. It's a nice tension. It's warm. All the the um the whites in the house that we used had a greenish there. quality as well. This is a nice shot through through a doorway, through a doorway into a, across somebody else, across somebody else. I like the the texture of the shot and the the layers of it. And this is just something that's caring, but also has sexual overtones as well. And the phone's always ringing. This is where you see what what pregnancy really does to a, a woman's body, as opposed to the sort of Hollywood version, which is it's wonderful for Tilda to bring to the film. There's an in the, this is also <clears throat> there's an inappropriate nudity in this house. Which is also a. Uh, Tom, is everything all right? Yeah. There comes a time when uh, you, get that. you should separate your. I think, anyway, it's a personal issue, but I think that you should separate your 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 body from your children's, and it's that's missing in this house. So, which um, oh. is disturbing to a certain extent. But so far, there's no uh, alarm bells going off, particularly. <laughs> and it's the baby's crib, the cot in the corner there. It's always there. And it's, that's the thing of just in, of watching your parents. It's fine. This is um, in Biddeford now, where we by where we filmed, and this is where I used to go on holiday when I was a kid. It's not so bad. What? Devon. They forget to speak English when the tourists leave. So he's gone from London, a very, very busy city, to the middle of nowhere, and I completely depopulated the, like this one. the village and the town as well, so that he, you, would hardly ever, you see a taxi driver. We'll um, there's the girl that comes over. There's But... Down here, they all have... Giant foreheads and There's no one from their around. Very, very rarely do you see anyone. And that's a sick remark. So it's very isolated. Sick world. And he's isolated. 
and so that when later things happen, it can be put down to that that he's just moody and lonely, and uh, if you choose to put it down. To that. Oh, that's two plastic bags again. Back to the house. I always tried to put the house on the more often than not on the crosshairs of the camera, so it was always central and looking directly at us. something through that window that he should never ever ever have seen and his life has just fallen apart absolutely fallen apart it's destroyed so it's secondary abuse if you think well it's not it's, it's primary abuse it's abuse I made a decision on set not to look through that window, just to have him look through that window. So. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not coming all the way to London on spec, Francesca. Well, I know you know what happens. I'll, I'll get up there, and he'll offer me. No, yeah, he will. It's just a normal family scene. No, well, I've got There's the girl. Jesse's just gone through. Okay. Well, handle this very well, Freddie. This is the difficult stuff that he's doing because keeping it simple. And then this is another steady cam shot we did, which. I just put him on. I can hear him. I know he's there counting. It's very strange. Very good. I don't want to be quick behind him. I don't even want to get inside that mine. I, and also, the audience just, just doesn't know what's happened. It's, it's all very hard. Yeah. So, again, it's inappropriate nudity. How's mum? What's the matter? This is one of our. Um, hang on this is one of our editor's favourite uh, scenes for Lara. He loved her acting in this. He thought she was extraordinary. I saw you. Saw me what? In the bath with that. Yeah. What were you doing? What do you think I was doing? He had a bath. I got in. He got out. That's not what I saw. Well, that's all it was. Where were you? It's a pretty weird thing you're suggesting if you're saying what I think you're saying. Look, I haven't told you. She has a real you. ability to. Um, she probably should have. Nothing happened, okay? She let she that she was unfazed by the camera. You Which I was something that I was taught yes, I when I was um, when I first started. Alan Clark and Chris Mengis taught me that that it's your friend. You okay now? It's how you get uh, out to the audience, but it's your friend. It's not, nothing to be afraid of at all. And uh, she has an, an instinct for that. Some people learn, have to learn it, and she she just had it. We talked about it a lot. She has a, um, a, a, and yet she knows how to act for it. So I don't know how, but she did. We we yeah, we had a very good time working together. This is a very difficult set to work in. I didn't. I wasn't very happy with it. But in in the end, when I saw it uh, on the film, I did like it. I liked the green um, of it. The odd, uh, the odd colouring and. And this is, again, he knows now. She knows that he knows. They're unaware. But he doesn't know what to do with the information that he's 
found so. There's two old men sitting in the corner there. It's a bit of a surprise. <laughs> I think at one point I had this idea of doing some kind of um, Fritz Lang type shadowed business in the uh, pub, but I scrapped all of that arty stuff. I need a drink too. In the end, I just Get my tried to stay with his simplicity. His as much as could. Some good textures to last there. Just water, please. Costumes were all kept flat and generic and uh, very um, simple and timeless as much, uh, you know, as much as you can. That's a, for me, that's a Garbo shop, or actually more of a Bergman shop, to be honest. A mixture of the two. It, it, it will come up again in a second. It's uh, incredibly lit and... Yes, please, mate. Yes, please. There she is. And the um, the idea was that we were not making a documentary here. We were making, trying to, attempting to make cinema, so um, that it should be beautiful, but the acting within it should be non-acting or appear to be non-acting as much as possible. This is my little brother. Hello. We're going to the beach. There's a good young actor there, Colin. All right, but you'll have He's to. He's Irish. He had to lose his accent for this. But, uh, why do you think? Come on. Yeah, very nice lighting. We used very simple lighting because we had to move fast because we had non-actors, but um, they managed to do an incredible this job. This is Nick. Hello. Hello, son. Hello, Nick. This is mum and dad stuff. We're going to the beach. Which I like. He defers to her. You, She's in yeah. charge. That's your first, is it? Yeah. Michael. Will you bring them home? Of course. That was Ray's thing. He deferred to, to her. Just... That was what he wanted to do in that Night. situation. Night. Well. That was very good. Good Tom. choice. Tom. And then there's this. Who is he? I don't know. Just make sure I don't go mad, alright? Don't no, take that. No thanks. Take it, you might get stuck. It's alright. Night, Tom. He's, he's lost his. <laughs> just lost his soul completely. Doesn't know what to do. She thinks it's fine, it's just normal moody behaviour, you know, and, and she knows that they're, you know, they're up to that. It's a day for night, just at the very end of day for night. This is where you bring yeah. your girlfriends. It's beautiful. All of them. And a uh, slow crane. <clears throat> and just the sense that he's isolated. We start to isolate him more and more. Francis, or he does. He bring he that word isolates you. himself. But Might be worth it. And because they are the uh, the age that they are, die. sex is in the air. No. So there's a I saw my granddad die. You're given your sexual vocabulary by your parent if you're abused, so, or by your abuser if you're abused. So, um, she operates in the way that she operates to, as a direct result of that. But then, being that, that they are teenagers, it, it it is in the air, so it's easy to mistake it for just that. Say something. So there's always that. What? Kind of double edge in anything, in anything that we did. I like your accent. You're taking the piss. No, I'm not. Don't you like his accent, Tom? Just take your time, take your time. It won't be long. Keep warm. And so he's lonely again, or he's alone again, rather, I should say. Tom! Tom! So 
a, there's a good, they're both such kids in this scene. And I like that though, it's because they go from being grown ups to being kids back and forth throughout the film. Everything. You and Dad. What do you want me to say? What happened? Nothing happened. That was a huge effort by various people to make me cut into this and I refused to do it. Just let it play out and I think it really works in that. It takes as long as it takes. I called them off each other when slow down, but they were going at it. And I like that he just left the frame for a minute there, for a second. That's good. They were, they, were, they were so fond of each other, these two actors, that they, I mean, they have a real passion for each other. Such, they're such good friends, still, even today. Very, very good in this, all of them. This is a very, um, we would improvise in rehearsal and get it right, and then I would rein everyone in and compose them. You lost track of time. I've had the police out looking for you all night. Your mother hasn't had a decent night's sleep since the baby's been born, and you're on the fucking beach. Now, this in it, it, it is a, on one hand, a, a straightforward, angry parent. The kids have been out all night. Done that. Did he fucking do that? Did he do it? Did he fucking know? Did he do that? But she knows. And he knows. Fucking and the boy knows. And does the mother know? Leave it. That's enough. Leave it. But uh, this is that. I had it. Get that. Getting that look in her eyes was that was what we had to uh, work on. She doesn't buy it for a second. Come on, finish. Come on. 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 You know, he said, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, and you know, in about a second he's convinced to go upstairs. <laughs> I'm hungry. What? I'm hungry. Go to bed. And again, just being economical with the camera and as elegant as possible. But this is, um, it's only significant to me, I suppose, but... And she leaves. Passes him. And she turns her back. There's a lot of that in this film. She turns her back on her family. She has something else that she can focus on. And then we come out for air again, but each time we come out for air, we know we have to go back inside, so it doesn't... Even at the outside, will eventually you know, become claustrophobic. I'm very, I'm, I'm fond of this is silent movie acting, which I like. Maybe to do, do these huge landscapes, but when you have these guys, especially Freddie, sort of tripping through them, it's, um, it breaks the cliche as much as possible. But I, I am very, very fond of cliches. There's a very good reason, you know. But we see them time and time again. It's just, that's, I think it's a lovely one. Just got the message. Dad's in his place. Evaluation seems fine to me. 
It's going to spread a very nice cool. lighting mixture of warm and cold. And does the fitting, the fittings and all come with it, yes? That's super. Very good silhouette. And, uh, detail. I particularly like the bar. And slight textures on the walls. No. And Victorian border. When can I come and see you? So again, we don't know who he's talking to. We never need to know who he's talking to. But he's, that's no, his. That's, that's his spot. Okay, super. Thank you very much. See you then. Bye. Bastard. So this is another, um, you wonder who she is maybe. This is another um, moment of discovery. What do you do with that information if you're 16? Again, Freddie's handling it really well here. It's very simple. Uh, talking through the scenes sometimes and just... And that's just something I caught him doing on set one day and I liked. How could you let him? You're acting like a child. He's our dad. Why would I want dad when I can have Nick? He's old. He's a prick. He's nothing. This is sowing uh, little seeds in the audience's lined with, again, with inappropriate nudity. To do it. So. Do you want to do it with Lucy? Do you want me to have a word with her for you? I've got this. I'm keeping it. Do you think Lucy wanks in the toilet when she's feeling neglected? What? Because I do. This is one of her um, first emotionally tough scenes when she had to uh, break down a little bit. Just the beginning. But. Uh, Tough for him too. <laughs> Just a uh, nice composition in that frame too. There's the house on the crosshairs again, centrally framed. And, um, the shame is that DP was, uh, you drink too much. who hopefully will forever be my DP. It was an incredible find. It's talking about composition, well, he had a real scared. innate understanding for what I wanted. You should try it. And, no uh, this lighting is extraordinary. But, um, get there first, right, she's going. he was, uh, I think, quite young 
I think it was about 30 when he no, showed this. That's it was for a DP is with this kind of showing this kind of authority and abilities very, very rare or I don't know maybe it's not rare maybe they just don't often get the chance to uh, show themselves you know is it just so different having Alice but he has an incredible sensitivity and sens sensitivity the entire ca crew were well, cast I in the same way as the uh, too, the now. actors were I wanted needed to have very very God, warm and good go people this? around these kids when they were and, and the, the grown-ups when they were doing their um too. I have to get like, you know, trying again. trying to get into these emotional yeah, states and, stuff. Here. and uh, succeeded to in finding an incredible group and all, we all stay in touch and well, maybe we will go back to london if it doesn't work out it's important to to um to be very careful about the people that you choose and the camera crew are a, yes. the camera team are and as are the sound team actually are in very very emotionally difficult situations with these actors and so they have to be people that they can that the actors can absolutely trust and that I can trust and uh, so you have to vet them very carefully and so everyone was given the um, given the, the script ahead of time and I needed to know why they wanted to come and work on this film It's an old um, wartime bunker. It's a nice landscape shot there. Um, which Michael built, Michael Carlin built. It was, uh, it looks like it was born there. But uh, it was an idea that Michael came up with and when, I, when he came to meet me for the job, um, brought a book of bunkers in, wartime bunkers in. And, um, I'd already, you know, thought of giving the job to somebody else. So I said to him, "Listen, you know, I really, really, uh, you know, I love your ideas and stuff, but I think it's going to go to somebody else." And he kind of wasn't that happy about that, but that's the way things are. But then I called him and I said, "Listen, do you mind if I steal your idea anyway?" <laughs> and he said, "Yes." I said, "If the job falls through with this other person, um, you're on." And yeah, and it did, and on he came, and he is hopefully going to be with me forever. He's a magnificent, he's a young Australian um, designer, and incredible, incredibly thoughtful and caring, and uh, very very able. Has an incredible team too, and you need that. But that bunker image, which suits the film from in, in my mind so well, belongs there was was just it was his notion it wasn't in the book at all i think alex is very the writer of the book is very proud of it because uh, in a way it, it's you know it's a pretty good image to uh, set the film off you know? it's an echo from the beginning of the film and again, using the back of the head, which is another echo from earlier on. Again, we stripped we stripped the dialogue away as often as possible, and I have a, a real love for silent movies. And keeping the dialogue spare, and also sometimes keeping the um, the words don't actually mean that much, and but the what's behind them means more, or what or the the opposite of what people are saying. You know. So uh, as, as often as possible, I'd, I'd keep it quiet, just quiet. And again, he, he, you'll see with this scene that's interesting because it's not centrally framed. Oh, that, I know why, because of the tree there. Um, you can't quite hear what Ray's saying. Ray's saying here, but it doesn't matter. It's just a fa family imagery. Which of those shall I send, Granny? Tom. This time next week, you'll be getting ready to start school. Want to go to London to sort things out for college? 
Oh, I've got my sleeve in so I can take it out there. Pounced on that. What's she on? That's such a lovely one of you. Who's your I'm going to send that one to Mary. <laughs> I like that look. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? The face on it. Oh, that's it's the most extraordinary thing with the anamorphic lens widescreen is that it means that you don't have to move the camera. And I know normally these days people move the camera a lot, but I'm not particularly for that. But what you can do if you choose not to to move the camera is that the actors can just develop the frame. And it's it's commonly thought thought that you it's a, a very slow process. Um, if you're using these widescreen lenses, especially on, on, in interiors, and for me, I found it to be the opposite that that because the actors could develop the frame and could work within the frame, we again weren't having to move the camera so much. But also, you know, we had an extraordinary focus puller, which is we really do need with these lenses. But um, I found it a much much faster uh, lens to use than I've than I've experienced as an actor before when when I've been around cameras. I also think it's, it's, it may, it, it, it instantly is, you know, it shows itself as cinema, it doesn't show itself as, as something that's primed for the video market or for the TV market. So it's a, <laughs> he's muttering for, to the baby, being dad. Don't really know what she's saying, but someone's apparently coming down and, and it's just really about that, it's about watching. Mary, she's going to come. She's coming down. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Do you want your mum? Do you want your mum? Do you want your mum? Mm. Yeah. She's down number two. Oh. Little Megan. Oh, my God. Who is her? Oh. Very young, very, very young baby. She was preemie, oh. premature baby, sir. So. None of my shoes fit anymore. Sweet. And, and the most well-behaved actor on the set, I think. I'll get you one of those... Um, Again, using the cold light from the outside and the warmer lights on the inside. There goes the phone again. I'm running an ice-hot bath, you know, mate. You can do with an ice-hot bath. The stillness is, is, is very useful in that we can, the audience can have time to reflect and to, on what they've just seen and what they maybe think they might be about to see. And, but also they can quietly just get to know the family. They can, um, I want them to get to know the family, you know, and to feel something about these characters. Even, you know, if they, even if it's nothing, why would they feel nothing about someone? So it just... So there's a real gentleness of just drawing the audience into inside the frame as much as he possibly can, you know. Um, here we do movement because we're going to drive him on, but generally it's, it's pretty, very little. <coughs> so he senses that something's up. There's a kind of sexuality about that bush, which if you don't see it, then you don't need to. <laughs> but uh, this is why I shot at that point. And this is why widescreen is so wonderful. Yet again, just see there. very very much underplayed the music so it just becomes part of the fabric of the film and not it's like a skin rather than um you know a, uh, a kind of drama queen character you know it's got a very very much um, understated and spare but moving but I, but again the music was a I almost took this um, cue out I'm so glad I didn't but the music was uh, from the old school, in a way. 
very orchestral and gentle. This was a very, very difficult scene coming up and uh, You should take that out. Um, cut that out, whoever listens to that. I don't want to warn the audience uh, about this. Just let it play quiet. So here we see finally that the devil is in the house, you know, and this is what these monsters do. And uh, the composition and the, and the framing is very, again, as simple as possible, but unwavering. Um, it's a uh, Took me back and forth, back and forth, many times on whether we should, how much we should shoot of this, and I finally <laughs> decided that we should show what they do. And victims of abuse who've seen it have generally uh, agreed it. It represents their pain very well. Right. And we have two eyes looking back at us because we're the people that do this. This is just a movie. This is not a documentary. So. It's the audience, the, the, you know, the monsters are in the audience, or possibly. But, uh, very, very, very difficult day for the actors. It showed incredible bravery and uh, Freddie's stuff we actually shot on a separate day. So he didn't, he was acting, he sucks off here, it was, it was excellent. It's the back to the womb thing there. Um, but, but very, very difficult. That's, that's why I think Lara is probably one of the most extraordinary actors. And as is Ray, it hurt him so much. But they, I think they did a good job in showing what these people go through and what they do. A lot of the preparation for this scene um, went over a long period, for both of the actors, and we talked and talked and talked our way through. And then the night before, I, I was with both of the actors the night before and make sure they were okay. It was a, a very closed set, and the bare minimum of the technicians were allowed in there. But it was very disturbing for the crew as well. Very, very disturbing. They loved these people, and they knew them. But it's a tough one to direct because you're the, you have to, well, you know, the boom man may be crying and the continuity woman, Sue, she was crying too. And, and uh, I have to keep, kind of keep my head above water and talk to the actors. I talk to them during the scene as well. Kind of guide them through it. So that, because if we don't get it right, we have to come back and do it again, and nobody's going to want to come back and do that again, so it's best to talk, make sure they're okay. But finally they got it.
and then we'll sit and think for a while. And she finished the scene off. Very good, very instinctive and very, very good acting. Very difficult day. But uh, we were all very glad when it was over. <laughs> nice, nice, gentle track across to bring him down. Very difficult for the... Um, Stuart, the guy that was working the dolly, because I would really have to be subliminal as much as possible in the movement. Very, very, very difficult stuff to do. So, top class. Put the kettle on, would you, Tom? Again, from the back using the image of the back of a human, I like very much. A lot of actors really do not want to do that stuff because they want to get their face on camera. Um, but I love, I love not seeing the face sometimes. Yeah. Beautifully executed. Very nice look. It's an incredible 16 year old boy. You know. One of my favourite music cues, this. And that we sit with the shot as long as we do. The editors were, um, push me and push me on that. Or I push them, actually. <laughs> Both. And, uh, we are around the table and everything's normal. Just trying to keep them as still as possible was the aim, just an ordinary, you know, if, I know it's maybe a breakfast or maybe a, maybe the same day as the bunker, probably the same day as the bunker. Get out, Tom. lied to me. You're still fucking him. I saw you together in that shelf. I saw everything. Did you get off on all this? I fucking hate you. Again, it's that He's 16 and uh, for me, and he's for that he, <clears throat> that his, he doesn't know what to do with what he's seen. This is a very common thing, self-abuse. Very, very common. Psst. She does this very well. This is, um. Do you want to hurt me? Once again, to remind you, this is not real, but uh, she uh, does this very, very well. This is hard to do this stuff. And him, it's a very steady look. And he's trying it. Why is he doing that? You know.
That's bollocks. It's got to stop. I'll tell mum. We're going to London tomorrow. Who is? Me and Dad. You come with us. It's you very lonely. It's kind of isolated. I'm very lonely. Maybe I can get you laid. Desperate. It's a def desperate thing to say. So, um... So again, if was a, we were very, very pleased to get this out of the way. But, uh, there, there was a, there's a build-up of, of tough scenes. Alright. Thank you, Tom. You know me tomorrow, yeah? What are you doing? Just got to see some people. Am I sweet? No. I like this guy, this, this actor. I like vodka and tonic with some ice, please. And, uh, yeah. Red wine. Yeah. I like him because he, um, it's the end, it, it just has, gives you that feeling, just with that little thing that he did. Alice Over the end of a long night, would you please go to bed? I don't start, don't start fighting. And the scene that they watch, it builds to them. Let's go to a club. No, I'm not having a club, I'm tired. Let us go then. I'm not having him in a club. It'll be fun. No. I love Freddy's look there. You can stare at all the Watching dancers. Him. Make me sit at the bar and protect me. Shut up, you drunk. Pushing it, they're pushing it, and that look, that look pushes him in that one. And then we're in a completely different landscape, and this is London. Kind of abomin, kind of a abomination. Of the architects, these these people were awful, awful people. What they put these. They put humans in these boxes. Disgraceful. This is a little ode to Alan Clark, who's my hero. Hello. One of them. Um, and he used to. He would do. He did a shot of me once in a film with a steady cam going along a corridor or going. Yeah, walking along a corridor. I was put there in film. Now he's in a place he didn't even know existed. And she is at home. And we don't know what it is. She has an, a very, uh, she has an ease there that is unusual. Sense of safety here. Right. Better now. But I, I'm, you know, I don't explain what the character is, who she is. The actor knows. Where's Sammy? Down at Monica's. Again, they're talking about people we don't know. This is my baby brother. Tom, this is Carl. Hello. I thought you. It's a real Actually. horrible thing for a younger brother to be introduced as a baby brother. Believe me, I know. <coughs> so, I put that one on him. And again, he's isolated. Things are going on behind his back that he doesn't understand. This woman, uh, Ashling, I found, I saw her on stage in London. and She was just striking. She is an incredible actress. And this was a particularly difficult 
scene, I think, for her to play. Um, I could be your mother. No, you couldn't. But she does it with uh, incredible sensitivity. This is a set we built in London. The um, we went to see a flat, but the I think I think I don't know if it's the occupants or the landlord. I think the landlord didn't wouldn't let us film in there, so we've just built a re replica of it in the studio. And so the sound that you any sound that you hear, exterior sound, is all engineered by our guys and they did an incredible job with it because the, the, the frequencies that were coming out of the lamps were very very strong it's hard to get silence in there I love that look It's amazing that when you, when you, I mean, we, you know, I, I did push these actors to to the limit, and they responded with such kind of was like real, real generosity. They had a a need to be, I think, I hope, a need to tell the story. This was Freddie's last day of filming, so he was a pro by then. <laughs> he knew what to do. Carl? And these, this is all silent movie acting, incredible um, stuff, these guys. That, that is, that says a lot, that, all these looks that she's giving. And she stops it. It's just light detail and a car, a car light rig. Actually, a very, very complicated lighting setup to, to get that effect. Tom, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need you to wake up, okay? Are you awake? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. You have to get up. I need you to help me. You have to go to the hospital. Alice. The wallpaper on that wall back there is was my favourite. It's um, the most disgusting wallpaper I've ever seen. I'll go and ring the hospital again. We would have eighteen-hour wallpaper discussions. <laughs> so obsessed you get. When you're filming. You the, baby, please, the crib in the it. corner. <laughs> this is the only time Megan got upset. <laughs> it's, it's the real thing there. And I was standing with her dad and he... I just had him ta I just watched the dad and he signaled when he wanted to go in when he'd had enough. But Freddie had never... I don't think Freddie had held, held a baby before, I'm not sure. So it was all brand new to him. And back in the car. Back in the hospital. What's happened? Nothing. They just keep you in Alice in overnight. I want to stay here with Mummy. You want to be right driving home? Yeah. yeah. You pick me up in the morning. 
You pick us all up, hopefully, eh? Um, Freddie there. Okay. Looking down. Come on, Tom. Can't even bear to be in his company. And now I like the timing of this shot where the the guys are off down the corridor there and he's going to go through this door here and the, the, the doors close at the same time and it's right. signaling the end of the sequence and it was uh, very fortunate or just not quite at the same time. Nice, nice Go completion. Go up your ass all the time. Is that the only way you like it? Just shut up, all right? And these are images that we've seen before. You're sick. But the dialogue is now very different. And there's a, a, you, him. a lens called a split dioptra, I think it's called, where we can focus, have focus on the back and the front. Is that what you think? Really. As predictable as that. You just want everything to be nice and sweet. But it isn't. This we did in maybe two, three just takes. They were just so um, what does he think? good in this, the two of them. It's none of his business. I don't care what he and thinks. They, f they felt it, they got it right. see from the beginning of the film. <clears throat> Your mum sounded awful. How's she doing? She's scared. I bet. Is your dad with her? Yeah. Good. I was like that when she you said me, that. Okay. okay, thanks. Promise. That um, yeah. it's good that the dad's with. Um, Take care. You. People on the outside just have no idea. They have no idea. They may they may sense something, but they'll put it they'll put it down to something else. They they have no idea because the the programming and the training that the abuser puts the kids through is just so clever. They're the best directors in the world. Gently let her wander away. And that shot was um, inspired by those um, pictures of the babies in Romania, you know, those awful kind of orphanages and mental asylums and stuff. Tom. There we are. So this is a. Where's Tom? He's gone. He had to take a taxi home. Again, a very, very delicate scene and difficult scene. This is really beautiful acting Beaten from up. Tilda at the very end of the scene. Something wrong. This, she gives a look that no. is where, a, where an actress has succeeded in, in making the arc of her character work. This is, this is, a, this is about as good as it gets for me. Anyway. It's a tough role to play this. And the blood in the diaper there. You... Just for a second. Sorry. Just for a second. Okay. Okay. She's good, this woman. Very, very straight. Very, you, know, you feel that she belongs in that hospital. This was a real hospital we were filming in. So. You feel that she, just from the little looks that she gives, that she knows something. About something. We don't know what it is. You ever fancied anyone besides dead? What? And he's saying it without saying it. He doesn't know what the words are. You know. Is it something I've done? It's not you. Don't trust him. Keep him away from the baby. This is the look. What? Um, that is a very, very difficult thing to achieve. She's a 
remarkable. Just let him drift, drift in slowly. into center frame. Oh, again, it's that tree, just off center. No, I don't understand, sister. I have my rights, I'm a husband. Just put it back on the phone so I can talk to her, please. I'm, I'm not shouting. Again, he's in his space. He's yeah, for I a very different reason now. My no, I understand. No. Thanks, Tom. No, I'll be. Uh, I'll be very grateful. No, thank you. God bless you. Bye. Again, slightly hidden, which I like very much. <coughs> had your mother on the phone, screaming about getting the police and asking me to leave the house. What's going on, Tom? You know what's going on. No, I don't. She won't talk to me. What have you been saying? There's a very, very charged atmosphere this, uh, during this no, scene. In the, in I'm talking set. to you. You tell me. What did you say to her? It's a long shoot that, this day. What do you mean you saw me? I saw you with Jesse. I'm always with Jesse. I'm always with you. I'm your dad. I wish you weren't. How can you say that to me? I'm your dad. No, you're not. I hate you. What, what have I done to you for you to hate me? You're sick. No, oh, you're sick. You're fucking sick. You're making me ill. I saw you fucking my sister and you've been fucking... And it's out. It's out. And I'm black. Don't you fucking talk to me. It's never been said to him before. Hey, you fucking say that to me. You're fucking shot sick. There. She you brought that shaking idea with her. And his hand coming through there. And I love. I've used that as a poster you. shot, but they've never have let me, I'm sure. <laughs> And this wasn't as free form as it may seem. It was very um, structured, very, very rigidly structured. All of this. Once I, I worked through the rehearsal with the actors, and especially Ray here, I'm constantly nail him in, rein him in, rein him in, so it's taught, so he knows that he has a, has a structure that he can play. You fucking talk like that. You got your mother behind my back and talk shit. You're fucking sick in the head. Say so fucking. This is what's me. remarkable about Ray because fucking he gives you the the idea that the what you're seeing is is you know an improvisation. You know, you when we work in rehearsal, we would improvise to a certain extent, and then we would start to just make turn it into concrete. But he has the. I think a lot of directors, when they have him, they let him. He'll give you everything. He's an incredible actor. Um, but you don't want everything, you want something specific. And he's capable of doing that too, but I think he gets let down sometimes by directors. But he... It's so real, and yet it's still, we still are in, within the cinematic frame, and we light it, and we... But it's so real. It's a wonderful moment there, and it was uh, again just all acting. It's Laura, Laura brought that one with her, and uh, it was her idea. It was wonderful. Tom. Very, very good light. Very gentle, but just rimming around her there. This is a very good, um, Are you all right? very subtle camera move. All of the stuff that Stuart did in the room here was uh, very difficult with that room is tiny and uh, I was asking him to do stuff that was very subtle very gentle 
with a big Stop. heavy object. <laughs> so did very well. Very pleased with this sequence. What did you tell her? And again, questions are being asked, but they're not being answered. And uh, it's just the way life is. Sometimes the questions aren't even asked. So. Do you want me to stay? Yeah. This is a disturbing moment for some people. It's just sowing a seed in the audience's mind that which play is playing with popular myth, which is um, cyclical, cyclical abuse and. A theory of cyclical, oh, I can't even say that word, cyclical, that's it, cyclical abuse, which I'm not a, a big fan of myself. A lovely, um, gentle dolly in there. Again, all in one whole sequence. Good piano playing too. I kind of wonder what goes through um, abusers' minds when they are busted. You know, when it's out. Now he's on the verge because if well, I don't know what's happened at the hospital, if she's called the police, if she's threatened to call the police, or but. Um, we also have to think about what she knows, but the mother, and it's but uh, there's the crib again in the bottom right, back in his room. But I wonder what goes through their minds. I hope it's painful. <clears throat> again, we can just develop the frame. Slightly. Gentle pan. And, uh, stay within the with, kind of with the thoughts of the characters or what we imagine they might be. Um, keep it as simple as possible. This is some of Freddie's best time. acting too. I don't understand why you're saying these things. You know how they hurt us. I know you're sorry, but. I don't know if you just lying or you actually believe him, either way, it's got to stop. Can't and hurt. It's a very um, difficult scene you hurt me. for all of them. You don't know how I feel. Mummy's all upset. And again, he's denying it. He's not even denying it. Just... Is it an attention thing? Is it, is it and that was a, a, that a thing that Ray brought in the, in the novel, Sometimes he confesses. And uh, Ray, Ray just insisted, and I, I would say, oh, no, I think maybe you should confess and string him along. But he was so right. He was right from the beginning. No, well, I love you. I never put you. In. You fuck me up my ass. You fuck me. Why would you do that? It hurts. See what happens when you put things in people's heads. Again. You put them into denial, their head, and his steamrollers on. And watch this is watch her face in this as well because it turns upside down. And look at him, steady, always the rock solid and the spine. Just going through your teens, having a me. And him, just a gentle man, you know, who's worried. Are you pregnant? Very good acting. Look at her go. Is that what it is? You see how you can put things into people's heads. I suppose I'll be doing it with him next. 
You can't keep saying these things, don't you? Mm, there it is. It was very much the time for me when um, I thought about giving up acting completely. And just working with really good actors because there's nothing like being in the presence of somebody who can really do the job properly. There's a baby, baby's crib. So, you know, from looking through a, through a window and having your life unravel, where do you go? And it doesn't end, it doesn't, if, if, I don't know if he's dead or not, he's still moving when we leave him, but even if they're gone, what do you do? You're still abused, you're always, they're always with you. They're, they have the longest reach ever. And what, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Which is, I think, oh, it's almost that, the last line of the film. I think the last final line of the film is, what are we going to do? Just the point. But you have to stop being a victim, you have to start being a survivor, and that's the main uh, challenge in life. Mom. St stop them abusing you. And that can happen very, very late in life. Because it... Uh, they've invaded you, you know. So he says, Mum. So it's a heartbreaker. I was like that t shirt. I just thought it was appropriate. Is he dead? I'm okay. What are we gonna do? Yeah. Which is which is directed at us. Well, in my mind. And this was a very <clears throat> difficult sequence, this last sequence to do. Pulled it off beautifully, I think. Um, it shuts us out. We're going to have to leave him at some point, and uh, which always, actually, I always, it always makes me very sad when we have to leave him to worry about him. But it's as it should be. And you can, again, you can then go on and discuss what you think takes place after, and if anything, or what they do, what happens to them. Are they all right? This was a um, helicopter shot with a, uh, a West Cam shot with a, a camera that's in a bubble underneath with gyroscopes. He takes all of the camera movement, all the shake out of the... so we can just quietly drift away. And let the music build a little bit, give the audience something and just drift away and there they are, they're in there. And what are they going to do? What are we going to do? So, it's all appropriate. It was very, they were very skillful, this team, because they had to, they were fighting the wind constantly, and, but it's rock solid. Very good team of uh, helicopter people. Let's lift up and give us a silhouette on the water there of the bunker. And we're gone. The last thing to say is that there's a credit at the end of the the um, credit roll at the end of these the list of the people that you're seeing now on the screen. If you're sitting through that, that at the very end of this, there's a dedication, which is to my father, 
and it was a difficult decision to make because the assumption would probably be that it was my father that abused me. Um, well, the fact is, is that it wasn't. Um, he was somebody that I loved and he's dead and I miss him and he would have very much appreciated this film uh, because there were things that happened in his life and things that happened in my life that uh, are exactly what you've seen so but it, I just want it to be said that the credit is not because he was an abuser he was a victim and, uh, and I love him Thank you.